Good to see you again. Uh, this is the second session or the second um, mini video for this section on the cross centered life. We're looking at the second section of your packet What's Your Life Centered On? And I just want to share with you first some symptoms of not being cross centered and then give some diagnosis or um, some prescriptions on how to become cross centered. I'm going to show you just a few other things. All this is in your packet, but I just want you to, uh, to kind, of, kind of think about it a little bit with me. We talked last time about being cross-centered, and that's centering our life on what Jesus did on the cross. That that becomes the thing that we think about, that we, we focus on, that we center our life on. Unfortunately, not many of us do that. We may be believers in Christ. We may be followers of Jesus, but our lives are centered on so many other things. Even beyond that, sometimes we, we don't even notice that our life isn't centered on Christ. But there are some symptoms that show up that would point to a life not centered on the cross. So what are some symptoms of not being cross-centered? What are some things that you can look for in your own life? that would point, point you to say, you know what, my life isn't centered on Jesus. The first symptom is a lack of joy. Joy, that, that thing in your heart, that thing in your life that makes you smile and makes you bright-eyed in the morning and makes you love being around people and makes you happy and makes you fulfilled. Now, joy doesn't mean you just feel good all the time. It's just a deep longing that, you know, things are going to be okay. I'm in. I'm, I'm going to be okay. Joy. So, folks whose lives are not centered in the cross, not centered in the cross of Jesus, they lack joy. They're kind of dull. They're, they're slightly numb. They lack something. They lack uh, a glitter in their eye or uh, a twinkle, so to speak. There's just something flat. Often they deal with, with terrible, terrible depression. They deal with battles of um, just moodiness and, and melancholy is a word that we might use. They're just joyless. That's a symptom. Another symptom is that they're not consistently growing in spiritual maturity. It's like their life is a series of roller coasters and spiritually with God. They're up, 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 they're on the mountaintop and they shoot down into the valley. Up, up, up again, shoot down into the valley. They're not consistently growing. They're just maintaining a level of highs and lows. The Christian life really is much more like a stair step, uneven stair step, where you grow some, then you plateau. You grow a little, you plateau. You grow more, you plateau. You never really decline, but that you continue a process of growth and plateau. Growth and plateau. Someone who is not consistently growing in their spiritual maturity probably isn't centering their life on the cross of Jesus. The third symptom is that your love for God lacks passion. It just lacks vitality. You might go to church. You might even be uh, in a small group or attend a worship service. But it's just flat. You don't feel anything when you pray. You don't feel anything whenever you, you worship. You don't feel anything when you're around the people of God. You don't feel anything when you hear sermons. You just are flat. It lacks passion. Passion is that, that motivator, that inspiration, that gut feeling that says, this is valuable. This is meaningful to me. Folks who are not cross-centered, church, prayer, Bible study, hanging out with Christian friends, being under good preaching, being accountable, accountable to someone else, just flat just flat. Lacks passion. Finally, the fourth symptom is in not being cross-centered is that there's a constant, constant 
seeking of some new experience or technique that's going to put everything back together. If I can just get a good book to read, or if I can just join this small group, or if I can just go to this Bible study class, or if I can just find the right church, or if I can just marry a Christian man or a Christian woman, or if I can just find some Christian friends, there's always some new technique or experience. If, 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 if I could just find this, everything would be in place again. That's a symptom of not being cross-centered. Well, let's look at what cross-centered living is, holistically. There will be each one of these broken down a little bit more in the next three segments, but I do want to show you this big picture first. What is cross-centered living? Well, the first thing that cross-centered living is, is, is you break free from the joy-robbing, legalistic thinking and living. You break free from legalism. And you're going to find out what legalism is as you read the book. But you break free from that. You also leave behind the crippling effects of guilt and condemnation. So many of us carry baggage and weight and burden of past things. And one way to be cross-centered is to recognize that Jesus died for those sins. He has forgiven us for those sins. And we can leave them behind. Third, cross-centered living thing is to stop basing our faith in our emotions and feelings and circumstances. To base our faith in what Jesus did on the cross, not basing our faith on how we feel. When we feel high, when we feel low, when we feel close to God, when we feel far away from God. But when we base our faith in what Jesus did on the cross, we become more cross-centered. Finally, you'll notice that you'll start growing in gratefulness, in joy, and in holiness. Now, I want to move through this just a little bit. There's some great scripture passages that I would encourage you to read and, and some important little discussions in your, uh, in your packet. But I want to bring you to this, this picture here. The cross-centered life means that the Christian life is centered in the cross. Now, any time the cross is separated from the Christian life and becomes a separate thing. We endanger ourselves of not being cross-centered. It's as if other things show up. Well, my career or, or the, the money I make or my family or my friendships or my things, my possessions, maybe even my children or my academic career, your college. Anytime these things... Our, our, the Christian life is separated from the cross by those arrows, those things. There's a distance between your life and the cross of Jesus. You run the risk of not being cross-centered. Now, we're going to take just a break, and you can pick back up session three, four, uh, and five, if you like. Have a great day.